from Faith Baptist Church, this is Power Surge. Now your speaker, Jim Kane. I'm reading today from Acts chapter 22, and I'm going to start reading at verse 1, and I'm going to do that in just a moment, but I want to give anyone that wants to follow along in Scripture, I want to give you the opportunity to find that if you choose to, and let me just encourage you. I, I, I encourage everybody to always follow along. Double check anything that a preacher says or a Christian speaker says. But let me speak to those that are watching on the video. Let me speak to those that are listening on the radio. And let me share with you, we would love to have you visit us right here at Faith some Sunday morning at 1030 a.m. If you do not go to church and you live in our area, would you give us a visit some Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. And we would also love to hear your prayer request and know your praise reports. Right down there in the bottom corner of the screen, you'll see the website, faithbaptistlinden.com. That's the best way to reach out to us. If you go to that website, and at the top of the page, about the middle of the way, you'll see a tab that says connect to us, and just click on there. And there's several different ways and means and modes that you can you can reach out to us, but we would absolutely love to hear from you. And if you do not go to church, we'd love to have you visit us Sunday morning at 1030 a.m. All right, Acts chapter 22. I'm going to begin reading at verse 1 and dig into a little bit about the life of Paul, whose former name was Saul. We'll talk about that just, just a little bit. Verse, 20, verse 1 of Acts chapter 22, Men, brethren, and fathers, hear my defense. So if that is not clear enough, Paul, he's, uh, he's on trial. Hear my defense, which I now make to you. And when they heard that he spake in the Hebrew tongue, in other words, this is not an ordinary person. This is not an ordinary Jesus follower. This fellow got some education. When they heard that he spoke with the Hebrew tongue to them, they kept the more silent. And he said, Paul said to them, I am verily a man which am born a Jew, born in Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, Yet brought up in this city, Jerusalem, yet I was brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, and that was a rabbi, one of the most respected, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, and was zealous toward God, as you all are today. In other words, you don't like my God, and I didn't either. And I, I am persuaded this way unto death, binding, uh, binding and delivering into prisons both men and women. I was a bad dude, in other words. Now, it's one thing, and I know we have a lot of religious wars in our world, and I know we have a lot of refugee camps in different parts of our world, but in many cases... They target the men and the young men. Paul didn't target just the men. He targeted everybody. He said, binding, delivering into prisons both men and women. Today's message is titled, Religion is Not Your Answer. Religion is not your answer. That's almost an oxymoron coming from a Christian speaker at a church. But I'm here to say religion is not your answer. Let's pray. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity to expound your word and to know that you are real in our lives. Help us, Father, to understand that religion is not what we need. Religion is not the answer. We need a walk with you, Father. And I pray right now in the name of Jesus for the next few minutes that you would touch me and bless me and anoint me with the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost that I would help someone. That I could reach someone and cause them, if they're not saved, to be saved and give their lives and hearts to you. 
and someone that may be saved that's listening, Father, my mission is to help them to be able to grow. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Religion is not your answer. Now, if you heard last week's message, you're probably not surprised at this because I was talking about the woman at the well. And I was talking about the fact that Jesus used, not religion, Jesus used a woman that had been married five times and not married to the one that she was living with. Jesus used, not religion, but Jesus used an experience with him to be able to get a lot of folks saved. I'm not going to take the time to revisit it, but many of those people that came from the city because of this woman in John chapter 4, many of them, they said to the woman, we believe. Many of them believed. Now let me start off and say that before Paul had his Jesus experience, he was a religious person. Now I want you to get that. Paul was a religious person. By now, he's not a religious person. By now, he is a follower of Jesus Christ. But before he became a follower of Jesus Christ and had a personal relationship and experience with Jesus, he was a very, very religious person. He was born, as I read in Scripture, Saul of Tarsus, about five years after the death of Jesus, Saul of Tarsus. Tarsus is in what now we know is currently know as Turkey. He was born five years after the death of Jesus. He was born to Jewish parents. He had Roman citizenship. Somewhere between 10 AD, anywhere from five years old or, or six years old, his family moved from Tarsus to Jerusalem when he was approximately five or six years old. Now, at age 10 to 15, again, theologians and, and Bible scholars don't know it exactly, but they say that somewhere between the age of 10 and 15, Saul began his studies under this esteemed rabbi that I read to you about right here in verse 3 of Acts chapter 22. He began his studies right there, and the studies included Hebrew scriptures. So you're understanding why I say that Paul was a very religious person. As a matter of fact, he was so religious that he would detain men and women and throw them into prison. He is, it's reported that Paul was at the scene when the first Christian martyr, Stephen, when Stephen was stoned to death. He was so religious under the pretense of religion that he persecuted Christians that left the Jewish faith or the Jewish religion. So I say to you today, religion, the title of the message, religion is not the answer, but I'm saying that religion may absolutely destroy you. Religion is not the answer, and if we're not careful, we will become so religious that it will absolutely destroy us. If you follow us on our social media platforms, you may have seen recently that we posted about the fact that a lot of folks will not come to church in the 21st century because of religious people. And the post goes on to say this, just because you do not come to church because people are religious, it doesn't mean that you stay away from God, in other words. Because it was the religious people that killed Jesus. Even before Saul was born, later his name is Paul, even before Saul was born, five years, it was the religious people that killed Jesus. Now, now Scripture talks a lot about scribes and Pharisees, and I'm not going to go into it in depth here because of the sake of time today, 
But if you'll notice, all through the Bible, there's all of these references to the religious people, the scribes, and the Pharisees. Now, scribes were a group of people. They were, in their profession, they, they mainly did writing. They would, they would write laws. Almost every village had a scribe. They would, they would do the legal stuff. They would take care of the marriages. They, they were the legal people. They did a lot of writing. The scribes. When you see scribes in, in the Bible going forward, I want you to think of legal writers, if you will. Now, Pharisees, they were an elite group of people, but they were all religious. There we go again. And political they were all religious. Let me, let me tell you, let me make sure in case I run out of time that we're clear here. Religion is not your answer. Being a scribe, being a church member, being a church leader, being part of a denominational organization in the leadership, that is not religious. That's not the answer. Jesus Christ is the answer. Now, we do need to organize and we do need to put our efforts together and we do need to have work days and we do need to put our offerings together. We do need to do things. But religion and especially organized religion is not the answer. Those Pharisees, they were, they were religious. They were political. It'd be like me trying to get top political leaders all in this room right now. It would just be a mess. That's what happened in the Bible days. Religion is not the answer. Now I want you to understand something else about, about Saul, who later became Paul. He admitted in Philippians chapter 3, he says, I was one of the scribes. So he was not only the one that was going from door to door. I want, to, I want to explain that if I didn't get that there. He was going from door to door taking anybody that did not believe in his faith and they had gone over to the Jesus camp and he was having them men and women. He ravaged the early church. He was throwing them in jail. He was putting them and committed them to prison. He was religious. He was a scribe. Now understand this, and he said that so. He said he admits he's a, I'm sorry, he's a Pharisee. I said scribe. He admits that he's a Pharisee in Philippians chapter 3. So I want you to understand about Saul here. Saul was religious. Saul was a Hebrew. Saul was an Israelite. He was a descendant of Abraham. And he had Jesus believers killed in the name of religion. Oh, but one day. Let me talk to you right now. Oh, but one day. He came from the religious side of everything, and he had on the way to Damascus once again to persecute Christians. On the way to Damascus, he had a Jesus experience. Those of you that have been around the church very long and you've read the Bible a lot, you will know exactly what I'm going to say right now. And there was a bright light that shone from heaven. For you see, no matter what he had done, the Lord knew that he wanted to use Paul to help get people saved and help the church to grow. It was a new church and he was going to use Paul. But one day on the road to Damascus, let me look at this camera right here for just a minute and say, I know you can't see me if you're listening on the radio, but let me say to you, but one day, no matter what you've done, you can have that Jesus encounter. And usually it's better if you come surrender yourself to him without he having to get your attention. For you see, he had to strike Saul blind. Big shining light on the road to Damascus, and he encountered Christ in a dramatic type way. Jesus doesn't do anything halfway. When Jesus does it, it is done right. But one day Saul, who became Paul, he had not a religious encounter, but he had a Jesus encounter. Somebody today is listening to me, and that's exactly what you need. You need a Jesus encounter in your life. 
Because when you, when you have a Jesus encounter, when you, when you have him to touch your life, guess what? You can write a dozen books in the New Testament. That's what Paul went on to do. He wrote at least, I think there's a little bit of debate on the 13th, but he wrote at least 12 books of the New Testament. Paul became one of the greatest missionaries of all time. Paul, in his journey with the Lord and everything that he went through and still served Jesus, he makes some of us modern day Christians look like sinners. He makes some of the best Christians in this world, some of the best preachers in this world almost look unchristian because he had an encounter with Jesus Christ. And I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt today that there's somebody, there's somebody listening, somebody watching that you need an encounter with Jesus Christ. And I say that because I am quite aware that there are a whole lot of hurting people in this world. There are a whole lot of folks that are hurting that we don't even realize they're hurting. There's been so much emphasis in the last recent months and years given to suicide awareness because sometimes we are so absolutely, our minds are blown and we're so surprised because somebody is struggling and we don't even know it. Let me just take a side note for just a minute. I didn't plan to say this today, but let me just say, especially as Christians, but can we just be kind to people? Can we just stop? You never know what somebody is going through, and you may be the conduit for them to have an encounter with Jesus. A lot of folks are hurting. There are some folks that are dying on the inside. And there are some folks right now that they look like they have it all together and it would absolutely blow your mind if you knew what they were going through and what they've been through and maybe they just need a little love of Jesus Christ. Now here's the other thing that we have and let me just talk to the Christian community for just a minute especially. Sometimes there are folks that fake it and they mask their life so much that they don't even realize they're hurting. You ever met those folks? They're hurting, but they don't even realize they're hurting because they have, they, their behaviors have become so strong in the ability to fake it, so strong in the ability to wear a mask. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, we are living in a hurting world, and people need a Jesus encounter. I've learned that one of the reasons that People are hurting is because there's been so much broken trust in this world. There have been so many people that have hurt. We don't trust religion anymore, and I'm saying religion's not your answer. Trust Jesus. But we don't trust religion anymore. We don't trust the church. We don't trust family. We don't trust people. We don't trust friends. We don't trust our boss. We don't trust co-workers, our preacher, church folks. We just do not trust. Some folks have been so devastated in relationships. Sometimes from parents. Sometimes from siblings. Sometimes from spouses. Sometimes from grandparents, co-workers. The, the list goes on. I can't cover it all. But we are living in a world where people are broken, people are hurting, and people have been devastated. And oftentimes, our trusting and our, 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 our trustworthy effects are damaging our lives. Let me tell you right now, yes, we are in a mess. Yes, there are hurting people. But let me tell you right now that your only hope is to trust Jesus. I communicate with a guy that lives off grid in Alaska. And over the last several months, we have, we have become what I refer to as friends. I've never met him in person. I've never, I've never seen him in person, never, never FaceTime with him. We communicate, though. And one of the things that I've learned about this wonderful, wonderful man, he went to, he went to Alaska back in 1982. He went there and had a, a 25, 28-year-old truck and a $1.67 in his pocket. He went there and, and he made it. And he made it. He still lives off-grid, but he, but he made it. And, and, but over the years and in and out of situations and relationships, I'll never forget something that I got from him not too long ago, and I wrote it down, and I thought, this, 
This is powerful. And this is where we are in America. He says, I have an urgent prayer request. And he wanted me to pray about something. And, and as we talked and we went back and forth, one of the things that Jason said, and I, and I, and I wrote down exactly so I didn't, didn't mix up what he said. He said, I'd like to hear one of your sermons on trust. I live as I do because of broken trust in the past. Watch this three times, over and over and over. Stay well, my friend, and stay safe, Jason. Jason is not the only one in this world that has trust issues. We all have been in those relationships and we've, all, we, we've been let down in the legal world. We've been let down in the business world. We've been let down with family. We've been let down in the church. Religion is not your answer. But I love what I read right here. Paul was saying, yes, I persecuted unto death. But he had their attention because he could speak Hebrew. And right now, there are some people right now that, that, that God's dealing with you. The Lord is touching you. The Lord is blessing you. And all you have to do is say, I need help. I need an encounter with Jesus Christ. Stop self-destructing. Stop destroying your talents. Let God give you the direction that you need in life. And religion is not your answer. It is an encounter with Jesus Christ. If I'm speaking to someone on the radio or watching on the video, let me share with you. If you don't know Jesus Christ, get in contact with me. I want to introduce you to Jesus. I want to, I want to tell you about this encounter that Paul had. I want to tell you about the encounter that I've had because Jesus, there's a song that says, Jesus is the answer. Religion is not the answer. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for the power of your word. Thank you for helping us to have the example of a religious man that persecuted Christians in the name of religion. But then he had a Jesus encounter and became one of the greatest writers and the greatest men of all the Bible in the New Testament. Wrote at least 12 books of the New Testament. And we practice things to this day that Paul encouraged us to live by and practice that he gave under the anointing and the unction of the Holy Ghost. If I'm speaking to someone that does not know you, help them, Lord, to have that encounter with you before it's too late. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This has been Power Surge with Speaker Jim Kane of Faith Baptist Church. For more information about this ministry, visit us online at faithbaptistlinden.com or visit us in person Sunday mornings at 1030 a.m.